everybody, welcome back. What is the pettiest thing you've ever done at work? I incorporated a penis into a wedding cake. It was a dual stroke from my old boss and the bridezilla. <laughs> nice. Two birds with one stone, eh? Sick. <laughs> The bakery I ran was a nightmare, and after giving the owners a month's notice, they started very verbally giving everyone raises in front of me. Part of the reason I was leaving was because they offered me a $17 an hour raise if I stayed, after not giving me one for three years. Where was that money the last three years? Well, they're not gonna give it to you until you literally lose your mind and wanna quit. Duh. I'm a bit bitter, in case you can't tell. You don't say. They also started to allow my front staff to collect tips, which I had been fighting for for five years. The bride for my final event was a nightmare, so I snuck a drawing of a penis in the middle tier of her cake, which was covered with scroll work. The wedding was my last day, so I delivered it and never looked back. I heard someone in the wedding party notice and the bride had a fit. There was my raise. There you go. There you go. I feel like that was worth it. Totally. So it was a photo of a penis. Wait, wait, a drawing, a drawing of a penis. Okay, okay. But you know what have really, really worked? If you use the icing and drew a penis. <laughs> it's like a 3D penis, you know, and then you really gotta look. And then it could look less deliberate than putting like an actual drawing for next time. For next time. Are you writing this down? You should be writing this down. I'm a classroom scheduler at a university. One faculty member in particular treated me like a doormat, constantly asking for little favors last minute and never thanking me. Ooh, it's the no thank yous for me. But it's your job. So one semester I put her giant lecture in the worst classroom on campus. Five flights of stairs with barely any room to maneuver between the front desk and the board. She didn't get any better, but it did make me feel better to listen to her complain about the room all semester. Mmm. So sweet, so petty. I quit a particularly toxic job after just three weeks. Excessive emails was one of my reasons for leaving. So in my exit email, I dropped the worst offenders email addresses as the sole contact for all future and ongoing queries. I flooded her inbox with over 200 extra emails a day and she deserved every single one of them. See, that one stings. There's nothing that kicks my anxiety into gear like an email that really didn't need to be sent. Thanks for my last email. Shut the fuck up. Dude, chill. And this is your reminder to not send too many emails and subscribe. I used to work at a department store with a woman who was incredibly mean. She was nasty to the younger staff, always demanded people buy her lunch and was just generally obnoxious. She always used to keep her purse on top of a tall shelf in our back office. One day after she had been really rude to me, I went and took an ESA alarm sticker that we used on the perfume boxes and placed it sticky side up on the shelf. When she came back from lunch and put her purse on the shelf, the alarm sticker stuck to the bottom. For the next three days, she sent door alarms off at every store she went in and out of and had no idea why. <laughs> Did they make her like dump out her purse? It would have been really awkward if she like got caught stealing because of you. That would have been the cherry on top. I would have loved that. That also kicks my anxiety into gear when I like accidentally set off those alarms. And then everyone at the store looks at you like you're a dirty little thief. Hey. I plugged a mini wireless keyboard into my boss's computer. When he had a customer, I would add an additional letter when he typed his password. Locked him out of the computer every time. Ah! See, that would work unless there was like a show password kind of option. Yeah, but nicely done. Delicious. Delicious. New sound unlocked. I didn't even know I could do that. <laughs> I'm even wearing the like pink petty sweatsuit. Little Miss Petty Piggy. <laughs> I was told I was finally getting a hard earned promotion at my current company over a year ago. A few weeks later, my manager and skip level manager told me I was being denied the promotion because of something I said. They wouldn't tell me what. Just your mama. Out of spite, I went to HR and reported a previous incident of when my skip level manager angrily grabbed my arm during our company all hands. <gasps> I got the promotion and that skip level manager is no longer with the company. And that's what's up. The things you choose to not tell HR, always keep things in your back pocket. But don't threaten, just do. Those are very wise words. One day I was very strapped for money. So for lunch, all I had brought was a big jar of applesauce. Someone ate all my applesauce and left the empty jar on the table. Oh, not the applesauce. 
I did what anybody would have done. I opened the refrigerator in the break room and proceeded to throw out everything while yelling at anyone within earshot. If I'm not eating, nobody was going to be eating. I was summoned into the manager's office afterward. The whole thing was captured by the camera directly above the refrigerator. Luckily, they thought my freak out was hilarious and they bought pizza for everyone. <laughs> Oh, well that had a happy ending. This is why we always need cameras above the staff refrigerators. Because there's usually like repeat offenders. It's always one person that's going and taking everybody's sh from their refrigerator. And also, I feel like more companies should invest in, you know, food for their employees. I think that there should be fridges and, and stocked fridges with like soda and water and snacks. It's a business expense. This is what I've learned running my own business. All of that stuff is a business expense. You're gonna give that money to the government anyway. You might as well give it to your employees and make sure they don't go hungry. Because if you're not paying them enough so that they like can afford lunch, then you need to provide that lunch or pay them more. One of the two. That was beautiful. My husband was the sole IT guy for our small school system. I had a principal who was harassing me daily. So my husband changed my principal's password. It still makes me smile 20 years later. Honestly, this is the kind of love I aspire. This petty, petty love where someone does petty things for you because they love you so much. I know you're out there. I know you exist, my petty soulmate. <laughs> Am I the a-hole for suing my boss for damages after getting out of my contract? I worked at this company for six years. It's a small privately owned business, but due to the nature of the work we do, I had to sign a non-compete agreement upon getting hired. Well, about six months ago, I got a job offer from a company that is similar, but not directly competing work. Better pay, better benefits, shorter commute, basically an all around upgrade for me. I told them about my non-compete so they were aware of it, but since the company isn't a direct competitor, I figured my non-compete agreement would not apply. I asked a lawyer about it to make sure. He said that there was enough difference between the two businesses and no similar clients that he thought I would be okay. Since I didn't want to completely burn bridges, I talked to my boss about it. I told him I had been offered a job and asked if he would sign a release from my non-compete so I could take this new job without fear of any reprisal. He refused and decided to fire me the next day. I talked with the company that gave me the offer and they started to second guess whether or not my non-compete would actually apply. And they withdrew their offer until I got my non-compete sorted out. So now I'm unemployed and facing a court battle against my former boss. My lawyer and I put together a case, give my boss the opportunity to just sign a release and get it over with or fight us in court. He opted for court. Ooh, okay. Bring it on. I didn't know he could be that petty and vindictive. If you don't want people to find other jobs that pay better, pay people better. It's not that hard. We ended up winning after asking for a summary judgment and my non-compete was ruled invalid and not applicable to this other job. So I told the other company and I accepted the original offer for them. This is where I might be the a-hole though. My lawyer asked me if I wanted to try and sue my old boss for damages. Lost wages, unused benefits. I had over 200 hours of saved paid time off court and legal fees, wrongful termination, etc. Initially, I didn't want to since I had won and I got what I wanted. But the more I thought about it, I decided to go ahead and sue him for damages. So I had my lawyer draw up a suit and we went ahead with it. My boss was livid. Excuse me, former boss. He called me and went on a huge rant about how ungrateful I am that I would be nowhere without him. Oh, that's just always the ticket, isn't it? They always do that. About how dare I sue him when he's done so much for me. I told him he had the chance to just let me go, but he opted to fight. So in a way, he brought this on himself. I ended up winning that suit as well, and he had to pay everything. I made out pretty well. Oh, I'm so happy for you. I talked with an old coworker from there a while ago, and he said that since I won, everyone else there that signed a non-compete is trying to get out of them, and my old boss is pissed. My old boss thinks I turned everyone against him. I just wanted to advance my career, but I kind of do feel like an a-hole about it since my old boss did give me a good opportunity when I started there. It's literally just business. Like people really need to learn to not take business personally. People will always choose a better opportunity that will give them a better life. So if you don't want people to search for better opportunities, pay them better and give them no reason to leave. I dub thee. Not the a-hole, but let's see what Reddit had to say. Not the a-hole, my boss was livid, ex-boss, that's what's up. I'm ungrateful that I would be nowhere without him, like on the streets because of that time he fired you. Oh, interesting take. You didn't cost him money. The legal system and his own arrogance did. He thought he was in the position of power. He was wrong and clearly your legal system agrees. And I'm sure you worked hard for him. That's the deal. They train you and pay you in return, they get your labor. He got what he paid for, you owe him nothing. Do you think he thought twice about firing you since he'd given you such a good opportunity? Do you think he thought for a second about you and your life while for all he knew you were homeless, jobless, and broke? Please don't tell anyone how I live. 
That's a good point. Very good point. He seemed to believe that by signing a non-compete, no one would ever try to get a different job. I don't understand how it took so long for someone to call him out on it. There must've been someone before me that turned down a better job offer because of the non-compete he made them sign. Jobs are always temporary. Unless someone really, really likes a job, you should always assume that someone's gonna leave. That's the way to go about it. All right, clearly Reddit agrees. Not the a-hole moving the f on. <laughs> <laughs> My friend and I were finally leaving a very toxic job after many years of abuse from our boss. We created fake emails to leave very detailed negative reviews on Google of the shop. The boss advertised everything was fresh and made that day, though really it could be four days old baked goods. We called the shop out for this and so many other things. It got to the point where our boss was stressed reading the reviews to us in meetings. In my last two weeks of the job, I was tasked with retraining every employee with these reviews, which were written by us, exclusively in mind for the training. Instead of training the employees, I just talked with them about the job, our boss, and all the inside drama and secrets at the shop. I also disclosed everyone's salary. Oh! So everyone could know how disgusting our boss was about who they gave raises to because he only gave raises to his favorites. More than half the staff left within three months after I left. Oh, dude. That is how you watch a company implode. If you really want to f over a company, tell all the employees how much they get paid and watch it. Watch, you know that scene in Mean Girls when the whole school is just like rabid dogs going after each other in the hallway? Let's roll a clip. Yeah, that's what would happen. But instead of getting mad at each other, they probably will, but getting mad at each other and being petty toward each other, they'll get mad at the boss. I work at a gym and if someone is being a jerk, I will change their account number on their card so the next time they come in, they'll be held up at the door trying to figure out what's wrong. Ah, uh, it's the small things, the little ones, the little petty, petty quirks. When I was working for Domino's, we had a regular that would always order five minutes before we closed for delivery. He was always hard to reach once we arrived, rude and never tipped. One night he ordered like five 20 ounce sodas, nothing else. I double bagged them and shook them violently for about three minutes before I knocked on his door. <laughs> Excellent. These were some employees that got sweet petty revenge. Subscribe. Got something that you